God bless you today. Susan Waldrop here, Tuesday, October 20, 2015. Are you curious about what's going on in the world as far as the body of Christ, the body of believers? What are some of the statistics? Where is the stress happening? Surely we see a lot of this on the news, what's going on, but we all know that the news is not totally giving us the truth. So it is up to us to be good journalists and do our own homework and research. That's why a lot of us watch YouTube. We watch alternative news channels of people that we trust, people that we believe, people that we know are not going to give us crazy information. So we gather together the people that we trust and we continue to come back to them for different reasons, for news what's going on, for encouragement of our own faith, for direction that we seek counsel because there is safety in the multitude of counselors, and this is godly counselors, this is not secular counselors, this is not some uh, secular office where they have nothing uh, about the Lord in their counsel. Their counsel is all by Freud, Freudian, you know, information and or uh, something that they have learned um, within a particular denomination that has got nothing to do with the Holy Spirit, the full gospel. So we seek after counsel that we know is true and is in alignment with the Bible, the scriptures, the Holy Word of God. I want to welcome, and first off, I want to pray for everyone. I want to bless this day that we are in. We need to have a blessing. I want to thank you all for those that have been writing and asking me, Susan, are you okay? You know, I haven't seen a video up in a couple of days. I am okay. Thank you so much for your prayers. I uh, was tired and I just needed a rest. You know how we all are needing to just rest in the Lord. And so I needed just a couple of days and the Lord really was on me and let me know he wanted me to just rest. So that's what I have been doing is resting. And he's been filling me with wonderful new messages and also showing me how to go about the different little projects that I want to do for you and provide for you that I pray to God will encourage you with your own walk because we are in an area in this time we find ourselves in when a lot of us thought the rapture was going to happen at a certain month because we have all of this information that is presented and it's very exciting and all of that but sometimes when we focus on a date or this or that uh, we all are excited to see the Lord's return but our focus must be as the birds, they look up to the Lord daily. They don't put together a whole bunch of acorns under the ground and this kind of thing. No, we need to look up and know that God will provide the daily manna that we need on the leaves of the trees if need be. He will provide money on the ground if you need it. He will put gas in your car, whatever you need. Your Holy Spirit, the Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, He will provide it. He will provide it. I continue to get front parking spots everywhere I go. I mean in the middle of a, a huge traffic, you know, jam, you might say, when the parking spaces are all filled up, yet there will be that very front spot left open right as I drive up and I pray it is with you. I am praying for you. I read all your cards. I get all your letters. I thank you for your all your financial giving, your, your faithful support to the ministry. And it is my job to continue to provide you with 
what the Lord shows me. So I have been doing a lot of research, a lot of readings on different things these last couple of days, and also intimate time with him, hearing his voice, and listening to the confirmations, noticing the confirmations. Thank God he gives us those. Father, we lift this day up before you now. We thank you for another day. As we smell your aroma, Father God, I thank you for this Miracle Ministry Christian Center that this ministry was birthed under. I thank you, Father, that it's extended to Susan Waldrop Ministries. As time changes, seasons change, yet your foundation does not change. So we thank you for that, Lord, your precious presence in our life. We thank you that it is still a miracle ministry that signs and wonders are happening, Father, the reports that I get of things that are not just of people being healed, but of blessings happening that we know is the signs of an apostle-type ministry, as you said it was in the very beginning. I thank you that you've kept it simple, Lord. I can't thank you for the simplicity I thank you that as we are simple and we look up to you, it forces us to be like children so that we're not leaning to our own knowledge, but in all ways we are acknowledging you, your superiority, your vast education, Lord, your godly counsel, godly wisdom, and your godly manifestations from the, the spiritual world into the physical. I thank you that you even have been opening my spiritual ears more and more. I've been hearing into that spiritual domain. It's been manifesting physically in my plane. I thank you for that. For surely you take us from season to season for your reasons to bless the body to encourage each other. Bless us now. We take the oil as children, as you have said to do. Father, we lift up the oil and we ask your blessing on it. We are not magical people, nothing like that, Lord. We simply believe you. We trust you. We look to you for our answers, Lord. But we do in proxy, as you say, that we have your blood in us. We ask that you anoint the oil. We lay the foundation around all of our property in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We ask you to anoint us, Lord. You anoint us, Lord. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that we are renewed by our mind in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, also that you are our covering because you are over all of these religious things that people would say, we have to do this, we have to do that. These are just formalities. These are formalities. God, you have your sovereign way about you. You are above it all. And we thank you, Lord, for your blessing in our life. In Jesus' name this day, amen. It's so wonderful. As we ask God's presence, he is here with us. You tell me, I feel as though I'm at home. That's the way we need to feel, as though we are at home with each other, with the Lord with us all day long, that we are in communion with the Lord. The precious Holy Spirit is most definitely an entity. There are, There is Father God, Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. They are the three in one, but they are still three. If you do not acknowledge the Holy Spirit, you will grieve him. That's why it says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. Include him in your day. He is real. He's very real. He's more real than the breath we breathe. He is living in us. 
He is around us. God also has his guardian angels around you, protecting you every day. Okay, I could just get gone. Go I could just go on and on in his presence. But I wanted to share just a few things. Try to keep this moving, otherwise it can get very long. I want to thank God <clears throat> for those that have go to Susan Waldrup dot org if you scroll to the bottom of the front page you'll see a map a world map click on that map you will see the totals excuse me you will see i'm on another site right now i wanted to say we have had 4134 visits since july 2015 from that world map that have registered in 85 countries. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everyone in that country. The United States has a 70% rate of visits. The United Kingdom is under that with uh, 4.23. Canada is under that. The Philippines under that. Norway is next. Brazil is next. Australia is next. Sweden, Netherlands, India, and it goes on. I love you all so very much. Thank you for tuning in. I pray God does a miracle in your life this day. This is the only reason that I spend my time with a heart-to-heart -heart talk, one-on-one, -on -one, as he said for me to do with you this day. Okay, I want to also thank those that have been watching on Roku. We have had 87 views from Roku. Those of you that are watching on Roku, those of you that are watching from the apps on Sermon.net, those of you that are watching on the pod, listening on the podcast. Actually, there is a video feed and an audio feed on the podcast on Sermon.net. And on the uh, first page of SusanWaldrop.org, I have put a special area right near the top where you can see all the different ways you can receive this signal. It's not just on YouTube. Um, we have had 576 people watch from video feeds and audio feeds on the podcast, which is... Uh, which goes to the iTunes, I believe it is. The player, we have had 759 video, video uh, views and seven audio views, list, uh, audio listens off of just susanwaldrop.org. So we want to thank everyone that's watching and listening from those areas. Also, I want to thank all of the YouTube visitors. Uh, we've had 5,000, 500,620 views. We've had 2,000, we have 2,702 subscribers on YouTube alone. Thank you, Jesus. We have had 123 new subscribers just within this month, this last month. Thank you, Jesus. And I do not have any type of way that I am making money off of YouTube. You know, some people, they, they have it where it's going to have a commercial. I have chosen to not have any commercials. I want the information to immediately start for you because I am trusting the Lord that you need to be blessed by information that is true and so there is no need to have a distracting spirit come to you before you even get the information okay i want to also mention that we have had some wonderful quickly uh i want to go into just a few little notes that have come in as well as 
uh, audio, uh, several voice messages that have been received and text messages into the ministry line. 661-390-1801 is that phone number in America. Uh, Brandy writes, I need prayer about my depression and anxiety. I've suffered with it most of my life. So, Father, we thank you that you now, as a body, we come together. We pray for Brandy now. And we thank you, Lord, that the peace that passes all understanding, just like coding her, I can see it, Lord, now. Your presence is coating her. The cause of this depression and anxiety, we thank you, Lord, that it is exposed now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, as we thank you, Lord, that her mind is stayed upon thee. In the name of Jesus, there is perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. Stay in his presence, Brandy. You say, but how can I do this? I have this and that and that all day long I do. But the Lord, I feel, is urging you to just begin thanking him every single morning and all day long. Find yourself little pockets of time. Little pockets, that's so interesting and loving the way he says that, shows that word to me. Like a kangaroo has little pockets, you know. She puts her babies in her pockets. Well, our jewels from God are our little jewels. And where does it say, I have hid that I might not sin against thee. Sin doesn't come in huge forms always. And sin is surely some things we do sometimes that we don't even, we're not even aware of. That's why it says that we pray for all known and unknown sins. That's why the Holy Spirit prays for us, because we don't always know what we should pray for. That's why he prays for us. So I thank you, Father God, as you keep Brandy's mind, her heart down in the Tantian, in her spirit, in her belly is where it forms from in the name of Jesus. And it swells up, 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 up to her mind. And it saturates her being as you rela release your presence, your power, your peace, beginning from her belly, Father, let it flow all throughout her body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Sister Susan, I was just concerned because I haven't seen any of your YouTube channel uploads since Friday, October 16. I pray all is well, and I see your messages again soon. God's blessing on you and your family and the ministry. Lots of love and prayers in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and soon coming Savior, Elizabeth from Australia. Thank you, Elizabeth. I am well. As Jesus withdrew, each of us need to withdraw sometimes as the Holy Spirit leads. And God fills us, fills us up again with peace that we become drained as God uses us. So we need to go back to the well of living water. And I thank you so much for your prayers and your thoughts, your concerns. Dear Susan, glory be to God Almighty. Please pray for my deliverance from poverty hindrances and evil forces. I need God's favor and a total breakthrough. I need money. I need a job, contracts, a house to live in, and a car. Yours in Jesus' name, Cecilia. Father, we pray over Cecilia now in the name of Jesus Christ that you bless her, that there is deliverance from this demon of poverty, this demon of hindrances, and that we go in and we take down the strong man 
is the scripture that comes right to me. That we go in and we pull out the strong men in the spirit realm. We do this now. We do this by the spirit. For it is not by might, not by power, but by thy Holy Spirit. By thy spirit thou art delivered of everything that the enemy should come up against. We go in and we pull out the strong man that he is no longer even on the premises in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we release as we ask for your favor and total breakthrough for everything that our sister needs she needs a job give her the best job she needs contracts give her the best contract she's needing she needs a house to live in and a car and everything father god we know you shall move in the midst of her and it shall be a miracle a sign and a wonder that she shall proclaim you did this lord jesus you did this as we give you all the glory, all the honor in the name of Jesus. Now I want to begin to pick up just a couple more things. I want to thank Dwight. He sent a couple of praise reports over the last couple days. I just wanted to say thank you for praying with me. God is opening doors for me. It's amazing. Nothing impossible with God. I did what you said to go do. You are in my prayers and will be. God bless you, Susan. And I wrote back, praise the Lord. We thank you, Father God, for Dwight's life. We thank you that you're moving miraculously in his life that you're doing more than what he needs above and beyond for you are the highest God in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God. We thank you as we also lift up Brother Tim as he is traveling through the country, Lord, that you keep him safe with his guardian angel that is beside him all the way in the name of Jesus, that he will have a miraculous report, Father God, of your goodness and your mercy and awakenings as you speak new revelations to him in the name of Jesus. Now I want to share just a portion of one message that came in, some questions and from Michigan. Uh, left a message, so I share this with you now. Hi, Susan. It's Ann Soyme from Michigan. I don't know if you got my message before a day or two ago. I don't know, but anyway, it doesn't matter. The reason I'm calling is I'm just wondering if you think we're going to have like a pre-trib rev uh, revival before the rapture. I I thought always thought so, and then now I'm thinking um, no, but now I'm hearing again that it could be. You know, we know we have to be right with the Lord and ready to go at all times, and I am, but, you know, I'm thinking it would get the people off the, out of the lukewarmness, you know, on fire for God, back to the Lord, you know, and, but anyway, and also, um, I, know I, I just trust you. I want to stop that there, and I want to say there is revival happening, Anne, in many countries, and uh, God is moving. It's hard for us to fathom this being in America because we only see what's in front of our face many times. And we pray for the other countries, but they, you know, where great darkness is, much more does the light of God abide. I know this personally from ministering in uh, jail for over eight years, that as we walk through the, the facilities from yard to yard to yard by police escort, and they had to unlock each gate because this is how bad it was. We were in medium security. We were not in the worst uh, place where the worst offenders were, but yet in even medium security, there were serious, very serious offenders, and 
Uh, I had to walk through all of the darkness of the cat calls by the prisoners and, you know, all of these things that they were screaming out things and the guard was constantly telling them, be quiet, you know, have some respect. And, and so this is the enemy, the devils. They hate the presence of God. But as we approached the little building that we had services in once a month for over eight years, <coughs> excuse me, the power, the presence of God was unbelievable, unbelievable. So I want to say <coughs> it was phenomenal, the presence of God also. So this is what I say that these third world countries where there are huge diseases, many more diseases are happening also in uh, all over in Asia and in Europe. Many more diseases are happening there than America. Believe it or not, America does not have the disease outbreak that these countries have. So not only with the persecution, but also the diseases that are happening, the the drugs that are being uh you know sent all around and all of this kind of thing uh but god is moving greatly with signs wonders miracles people are meeting in secret by the by the thousands so yes god is moving greatly okay the other question she had let me put this on the speaker I know you really hear from God. There's a lot of people who don't. But anyway, um, so if you have time, I'd really appreciate it. Call back. We don't have to talk long. Um, and also the, uh, oh, what's that other thing I was going to ask about? Oh, the, the pre, oh, are you getting any type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, opposition concerning your view, your standing on the pre-tribulation rapture? Because I've been kind of getting that as well from Christians that say, who do you think you are? You're going to escape all that. But I'm, I believe it's for the overcomers, the ones who are truly, you know, the most devoted to Christ. So I would just like to know what you think on that, because I'm thinking the rapture any day, but I, you never know. i have got to keep a, a focus on him. But... Yes, amen, amen, and yes, persecution is always going to happen. And of course, I, I get... I get a lot of persecution, but we cannot let that change what we believe. You see, whether or whenever the Lord comes, I am looking up, I am going. We have to remember we are just humans. We are interpreting the Bible as we see it, but we are also asking the Holy Spirit to help us interpret as well. And God also shows us by confirmations, by people that we are around, or by a message from an evangelist or, or someone, you know, or a rhema word that is directly given to us through someone. So many ways God shows us. Now there is a division. People believe mid-trib, people believe post-trib, and some people believe pre-trib. Well, of course, the more popular, the more desirable would it be to believe pre-trib, of course, who wants to go through any bad things. But I have much regard for some of the mainstream ministers, one being Perry Stone. I have a lot of regard for him. He's a very studied man, but uh, this is not just... Uh, the only reason I believe in the preacher of rapture because of Perry Stone. But he has a wonderful teaching on YouTube. And he's most recently putting up, uh, helping us to understand scripturally why the preacher of rapture uh, designates that we will be caught up because there are many scriptures that pertain to this as well as the time of uh, Jacob's troubles is really for the Jews that God is going to be speaking to the Jews to get them to come to Christ. So this time of seven years is really the time of Jacob's troubles when God is speaking to the Jews. It doesn't really have anything to do with the believers. 
But there will be believers that are not looking for the rapture that I believe will be here. I do believe that. But what I say to all of that is this is why the Lord told us to keep our oil in our lamp. Keep speaking to the Holy Spirit. Many times these people that I find believe in post-tribulation, they are not full gospel believers. They are uh, conservative. Uh, they're Christians that I call them, uh, I hate to say the word, but it's a carnal. Carnal is the word. Carnal meaning man. They are not, they're, they, they're good people. But for some reason, uh, why do people not speak in tongues? Tongues is definitely the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. It naturally happens. And some people say, but I never received tongues and I've asked God for that. Well, all I can say to that is continue to ask him, continue to humble yourself, and also ask God to take off any blinders of your subconscious mind, your emotions, pre, uh, things that you were maybe taught or never taught in some other church that did not believe in speaking in tongues. Now, there are many kinds of tongues. Yes, there are tongues in the Holy Spirit, which is what I believe, but there is also t uh, tongues the people spoke uh, up in the upper room. They spoke the language of another country. So it actually was another language. So we cannot put God in a box and say, this is the only way he works. That is to make God small. But we should ask God to speak to us each day. And to be at peace, to be at peace, to know that your salvation is intact. Salvation is the very first thing that is most important. Okay, I want to move quickly now to a couple statistics that uh, regarding Anne's phone call. Christianity by country, this is just from Wikipedia. As of the early 21st century, Christianity has approximately 2.4 billion adherents out of about 7.2 billion people. The faith represents approximately one-third of the world's population and is the largest religion in the world, with the three largest groups of Christians being, number one, the Catholic Church, Protestantism, an Eastern Orthodox Church. The largest Christian denomination is the Catholic Church with 1.09 billion adherents. The second largest Christian branch is either Protestantism, if it is considered a single group, or the Eastern Orthodox Church, if Protestants are considered to be divided into multiple denominations. So the biggest place that I wanted to say is very interesting where we find 100% Christians in what country? It might surprise you. This was interesting to me because as I scrolled down to see the pop uh, by country, Christianity by percentage, that means how many Christians in each country by percentage live there. The uh, Pict Pictarn uh, Islands has 50 Christians in it, and it's 100%. The Vatican City has 100% Catholic. 836 Christians. Romania is the next one. Isn't that amazing? 99.5. Uh, Armenia is 98.7. The next one down. Uh, but what is interesting in Armenia is there's only 3% Catholic there. That's interesting, isn't it? 
and it goes on down. All of these countries that uh, Greece, Zambia, uh, Cape Verde, uh, Papela, New Guinea, Puerto Rico, all of these countries, Peru, are in the 95, 97%. There goes a little notice. Uh, I wanted to say what sort of bothered me is I scroll down all the way to see where the heck is America. America has only 73% Christians in America. That's 246,780,000. What did I say? Susan's not awake today. 246,000, uh, 246 million, I think. My brain is not working today. 780,000 Christians, 73% believe in Christ- that they're Christians in America. I mean, we're way down the list. <laughs> it's unbelievable. You know, we ask, you ask me, Ann, where is revival in America? It doesn't seem like there's very much revival going on in America. I don't care what we see on television or anything, or we would not be way down the list. <laughs> you know, I mean, all you have to do is go to wikipedia.org forward slash uh, wiki forward slash Christianity underscore by underscore country. I'll leave a link. Interesting. The other thing on Wikipedia that I wanted to... Now, some of you can say, well, you can't trust Wikipedia. Well, this is just one source. You can go check out many more. The other thing that uh, fertility rate of the Christians in other countries was interesting to me. The Christian fertility has varied throughout history, but it has declined along with most other fertility figures. It is also important to point out that the Christian Christian fertility varies from country to country. Okay, so I'm going on down here. Now the Vatican City is number one. They have 100% Christians and it says the fertility rate is nothing. There's nothing listed there. Zero. It's unbelievable. Uh, okay, so I want to... Yeah, here we go. Wait a second. Okay, Vatican City is 100%. Okay, and the biggest one is East Timor, T-I-M-O-R. That country has 6.53 fertility rate. The Christian percentage there is 96.9%. So East Timor has, there's more Christians being born there. And the other one is Equatorial uh, Guinea, 5.36. So you can see there's not a lot of fertility rate. That's not very much, 5.36. And America is not even listed. It's not even listed on this list. It only lists, this is, uh, okay, by the UN ranking. Wait a second. Yeah, by the UN ranking, Greece is number one with 1.42 fertility rate. Anyway, it's just amazing, isn't it? And the Vatican is last on the list with zero. Zero fertility rate in the Vatican. (laughs) I'm not saying anything. (laughs) That's just the stats from Wikipedia. Pick it up for yourself. I'll leave the link. So all of these things, you know, show us where is America on the boardwalk here, on the Monopoly game. Uh, We sure are not at Park Place. (laughs) We are sure not there, are we? Are we doing our job in America? Or are we making too many television programs, spending too much money on all of these other things, and nobody's really out in the street evangelizing, nobody's really having babies in America, raising them as Christian children. That's sort of what it looks like, if you'd want to believe the Wikipedia. So in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for this information today. We take it with a grain of salt. We take it to you, Lord God. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to bless us this day. Bless us this day, Father God. 
so that there should be signs, wonders, and miracles in our own lives. Father, for those of us that have just had children or having children, we speak, Father God, your angels over that birth, that child now that is alive in the schools, that you would protect the children, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the glory. Everyone that's needing a job now, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless them with a job, with favor from on high. Father, bless them with front parking spots, just like you do me, Lord. Bless them, Father, and they're going out and they're coming in, coming in and going out, going out, coming in. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Father, for their physical bodies that need a healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we give you all the glory, and we leave this in your hands, Lord. We ask you to bless America, and we ask you to bless each country that each of us is in, Lord. We ask you to bless our land. As we know, Canada has just put in a new liberal leader, Father. We pray for the people for they will surely feel the effect of this new liberal regime. I hate to use the word, but that's exactly the word the Holy Spirit gives me. So we thank you, Father, for, for your blessings. We thank you that you are coming for us, and we know, Father God, that you love us, and we ask for your enlightenment, your words of wisdom. Holy Spirit, be with us. Make yourself real to our unsaved loved ones in the name of Jesus. Bring them in, whatever the cost, whatever it takes, we put them on your altar in the name of Jesus. And we say, this is our Isaac, Father. Bless that one. Bring them in, in the name of Jesus. I love you so very much. Thank you for your love to me. Thank you for your prayers. You bless me with every note, every financial offering. We thank you, Father, for that. We ask you, Lord, to bless back abundantly every dollar, every seed that's been sowed into this ministry. Lord, bless it. Bless the giver. Give them back a thousandfold in the name of Jesus. Send us your prayer record, requests. Send me your praise reports. And thank you for watching and listening. And pray for me as I now move into these new projects. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. God bless you. Have an anointed, appointed day in Him.